Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about how you can install Redis on your Windows using WSL2. And we are going to use Ubuntu Distro. Uh, let's search for it in Microsoft Store. And there are a bunch of them, but uh, this one has a lot of more stars. And this is exactly the one I have installed before and i'm using it so just go ahead and uh, hit install here and then you can launch it using this line as i did before uh, so now we have our wsl2 ready of course in your windows features you need to have windows subsystem linux uh, for linux checked also the virtual machine platform checked these two are required to be able to use wsl in your windows other than that it's uh, very smooth just download a couple of megabytes or a couple of hundred megabytes and uh, then you can start using linux on your windows and it is fast especially if you are using wsl2 you can use WSL-L-V to check the versions of your uh, instances uh, of WSL. I am using Docker Desktop and it is using WSL2. Um, of course, I am using the latest version of Docker Desktop. And uh, my Ubuntu, the one I have just installed, is running on WSL2. Too, but uh, make sure uh, this is correct and if you are seeing version 1 just run the WSL uh, set a version command and uh, put the name here then set the version to 2 this way it runs much faster of course you need to upgrade your windows to the latest version possible and then uh, everything just works so before doing anything in your Ubuntu uh, WSL, uh, just run the apt update and upgrade command and wait for it to finish. Then to install Redis, you just need to run apt install Redis server. And uh, this is going to download a couple of files and uh, you will be ready to go. Now we are ready to run Redis server. I can run this command redis dash server and if you are seeing this logo it means everything is working just fine and now i can connect to my database using the cli and to do so i can use uh, two different ways one is to run redis in the background as a service inside linux the other one that is easier right now is to just run another instance of WSL Ubuntu and call for Redis CLI. And I just do that. Let's go for Redis dash CLI. And now I can set um, a key uh, named name and set the data to put hacks and uh, we have saved this value to database here and I can get it back using get as you know Redis is a key value database uh, so you have keys and each key has a value there are different types of keys you can have but for the most part we are going to use strings or binaries Redis is an in-memory database and if I close my database here and there is no longer any connection to the database so if I get the name again and my connection will be refused and I cannot get the values and uh, if I run the Redis server again and call the val for value the again I'll get it again mm, so Somehow Redis is saving this data from memory into hard disk and that's good because uh, we need to have 
the cache persisted most of the time or the data persisted most of the time otherwise each time you close your application uh, and there is a crash in your operation system the data would be lost uh, also you can exit from this and let's run uh, the nano and see the configuration file so here i run the sudo nano command and uh, search for this pass of course I, I need to use my password here you can see all the configuration for your redis instance and down here i think there is a configuration for snapshooting yes and so uh, we have three uh, configurations for snapshotting uh, which is going to save the data into hard disk uh, these are the settings so after 900 seconds or 50 minutes if at least one key change then the data would be saved from your memory to hard disk the same goes for uh, 300 seconds and 10 key change and 60 second and at least a thousand keys changed so there are four ways to manage redis persistence uh, the first one is rdb the one which i just showed you using snapshots and aof is append only file and that appends every change that happens to your database into hard disk and no persistence means you don't want to save anything and you can also use the two methods together uh, to make sure everything is saved but of course saving data into hard disk comes with some challenges and you need memory to save from memory to hard disk also hard disk is uh, much slower than your RAM memory and uh, it reduces the performance but if you need uh, persistence that's uh, what you need to do and one last thing is that you can uh, run redis and uh, using services um, like this in the background and um, i can start um, the password uh, now redis is running in the background so i no longer need to run a different instance to connect to redis dash cli that's it uh, also you can stop the service using this command and it will stop and you can go back to old way and I can exit nano here and call for ready CLI and get name as you can see um, we have two different server the one I'm running uh, on its own and the one I'm I was running as a service in the background uh, so one has the key name and the other one didn't anyway and uh, that's all you need to know uh, to start using redis as your database in the next videos i would uh, love to talk about how you can integrate redis into your ace.net core projects